Good morning, welcome back to Stay Tuned. I'm Tony Angelo, this is my YouTube channel, and today we are out in Lebanon, PA, about an hour and a half west of the shop, because we are on a mission, an epic mission, because Tyler found the most important car ever on Facebook Marketplace. Is it a 2000 dollars Lamborghini? No, it's better. Tyler found his very first hot rod. Not, oh, another, one, another 82 Trans Am. Tyler, when he was 14, had an 82 Trans Am. Yep, first car, very first car. That's very right. first car, the car that started him into the world of hot rodding. <laughs> and he sold it like basically everybody does eventually yeah. with their first car. Need some money, you sell it. You and know, then he regretted it. 11 years later, he's feeling nostalgic and says, I wonder what 82 Trans Ams go for these days on online. Let's check it out on Let's see what the market looks like. And he found his exact car sitting in a junkyard or outside a shop. shop yeah. We don't know. Thousand bucks. We're out here. You swear it's your car. I swear it's mine. He says he can prove it. I'll prove it. And we're going to go pick that thing up. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm excited. We are 10 minutes it's away. It's surreal. Let's it's get surreal rocking. I, I, we are going to do our best to not giggle like schoolgirls when we get there and try to keep it cool. All right, let's go. All right, this is it. What do you think? This is it. This, this, is, this is, it? is it. This is it. All right, you put these wheels on? Those ones, I don't think I did, no. Actually, yeah, they were my SS Craigers. Yep, and the plastic dip in the back. A little bit of patina there. I can stick my hand right through the patina. In front of the wheel well, too. Right, she needs quarters, probably, but I don't think Tyler cares. Is this right there? Is that the seat that where you yeah. were made, made into a man? Yeah, this was always here. Since I bought it, I would always get poked by this sucker right here. All right, you gotta give me more. What else you got? Come on. All right. I could only afford an automatic at the time, so I decided to put a B&M shifter in this thing. And I went with a razor blade because I had no other tools, and I cut this all out by hand, and I was really upset about myself because the razor blade slipped. And, and you I cut through cut it? Right, yeah. Cut right through the side here. I cut right here. All those scratches are still there. So... I was leaving Napa yep. near where we uh, work at when I was a kid, and they had this big like sewage, like drainage spot there, and it's higher than the than the lot. And I drove over it and I bottomed out. So this normally has a flare. You could see it on the other side. Yeah, it cracked up all that the fiberglass there. So it looks like whoever had it after me took that off and was trying to repair. Yeah, it looks terrible. The, the, yeah, not good. <laughs> all right, this is not bolted down. And in there, oh, that's kind of modern timing cover. That this might this is a this is a Vortec motor. Yeah. Oh, we can make a bunch of power with that thing. That's good. What's it? Eleven hundred bucks for this thing? Yeah, eleven hundred bucks. That's a bitch in small block if it's if it's, if it's decent. It yeah, just, look. So you see the bolts going down? Yeah. That's a Vortec motor. We can make like three hundred and eighty horsepower with that thing without without blinking an eye. All right, keep that on the down low. The okay. big giveaway is this right here. You did tell me. I did that. You did that. Tell yeah, me. my first time towing, and uh, I didn't lock the steering wheel, and uh, she hit a pole. Okay. All right. So confirmed. This no. is your first car. There she is. One moderately posed 1982 Pontiac Trans Am. Actually, it looks to be housing a, a Vortec 350, which we're happy about. Well, if we can uh, keep a straight face, we'll be out of here for hopefully 800 bucks, rocking and rolling. Well, man, I'll be honest, it's cold, it's rainy. I don't want to go back and forth with you. Um, I don't know what you're feeling, but I'd, I'd be happy to give you 750 right now and pull it on out here for you. Would you do nine? You do eight? 850. All right, let's do it, man. I'm gonna throw on this little gold angel thing. Yeah, go for it. Right? <laughs> All right, that's ours. That's keeping this. Hey, go for it. So we have the 82 Trans Am that started Tyler's whole obsession with cars. Here, he has just purchased it for the kingly sum of $850. Yes, sir. The plan is this: we are going to get Tyler's old Trans Am fired back up and running and driving this week on Stay Tuned. So we're gonna get it back there, we're gonna make a plan, and we're gonna get rocking. Man, I was just down here Googling myself. 
And I am just amazed and shocked at how much personal information you can find about someone on these public listing sites. Like their home address, their phone number, did they write in Grimace for president in the last election? It's crazy. It's, I feel totally exposed. Data brokers are making a fortune selling your personal information to robocallers, spammers, and the like. It's a totally messed up system, but there is hope. You can have Aura, who's sponsoring this video, protect your sensitive information online. Aura can go through to all these different data brokers and put in opt-out requests and get your information pulled off of all those different websites. Now legally they have to remove it, but it's a huge pain in the butt to opt out, but let Aura do that dirty work for you. It's really easy to set up so you don't have to download a bunch of different apps. You can get antivirus, password protection, identity theft control, and VPN all in one spot with Aura. And you get it all at one super competitive price. So let Aura do the job of keeping you and your family's information safe online. Well, you can go out and do the regular stuff you want to do, like work on old trans amps. So go to Aura.com slash stay tuned and you can start off with a two week free trial. The link is right here in the description. Let's get back to the video. Okay, first day back after the new year, we've got Tyler's 82 Trans Am in the shop. It basically went without incident, except the transmission did fall out of the car once when we were unloading it. No big deal. We put it back in. It's still in there. Let's put this down. Ugh. Zimmy is here. He heard the call of a small block. He came running. It's like when the bat signal goes up, Commissioner Gordon. <laughs> Timmy's like, a small block needs me. He comes in. So first order of business, obviously, is uh, figuring out what parts we're going to need and what parts we have to get this thing running down the road just like it was in 2008 or 10 or something. <laughs> something like that. I'm seeing a complete Vortec motor. The guy told us it's stock, which is not our favorite, um, but it'll work for now. It does. It has an intake on a carb intake and a whole bunch of silicone, so we know it's not going to leak. So like that, we got to find a carburetor. I saw some distributors. Uh, it definitely going to need some kind of cooling system. It needs a fuel system, an ignition, and then we will be rocking and rolling pretty quick. Let's dig in and start looking. We haven't been in the back of this thing. We've been waiting patiently. All right. I got an oil pan gasket. Hopefully we don't need that. I know. I told Tyler I just bought that one. Should have just waited. Should have just got it for free. Yeah. All right, half a radiator shroud, cap and rotor, an extra set of T-tops. I don't know if that's a good sign or a bad sign. Oh, oh. Dud, I need that. That's for you. What is going on with the paper in this thing? All right. So give us a lowdown on this thing. Actually, you bought this at 14. I bought this at 14. I was looking for a car. Um, that's how it starts. It's how it starts. I was looking for what I could afford, and at that point. These things weren't too expensive, um, especially being a third gen. You know, weren't they weren't too popular. All my friends had Fox bodies. Couldn't afford one at that time, so we found this bad boy in way better condition than what it is now for fifteen hundred bucks. Guy came back to the shop probably like a month later, feeling like he got ripped off and really trying to yeah trying to get some free work done, things like that. He, he did not like weird. even though we shook hands on it then, but. Uh, he wasn't too happy. Yeah. Got a 350, built that up, put a cam in it, all that kind of stuff, and uh, blew it up pretty quickly after getting it running. So the next thing was just getting a junkyard 350, threw it in there, and I drove it like that for a while. Nothing crazy, but it definitely put some pep behind this thing, enough for me to start blowing up rears, which came down to senior year. I decided, we didn't have a senior prank, so I decided to do a uh, burnout in the um, parking lot. <laughs> and did it so hard that I was not able to get away because my differential blew up right there in the parking lot. And I had to do uh, community service, threats oh. of not graduating. Um, yeah, it was a big ordeal, but... Uh, Look as, at him now, yeah. principal guy. <laughs> and as a senior, I didn't have money to put a new diff in it, so uh, welding it was the option. And that is one of the giveaways that this is still mine because I don't know many third gens with a welded diff, yeah. and it's, it was a little hard getting in here, right? It wasn't too bad, yeah. A little tough getting in with that welded diff. It was fun diff, making so. fun of whoever welded this diff with the guys holding it. I'm like, this is his. <laughs> yeah. like, what <laughs> complete idiot welded this diff? I was that idiot. Yeah. 
click the link to head over to the Stay Tuned merch store. We just came out with a brand new Cyclone shirt, and you can grab them while they last. Head over now. Let's, uh, so yeah, basically what we're looking at now, it doesn't have any exhaust system on it. The transmission has fallen out of the car. There's no drive shaft. Those are the big things we're going to have to find. Yeah. Carburetor, we can, I got a bunch of small block stuff in the back if we need, and we'll find ourselves a carburetor and we'll be rocking and rolling. Uh, we're going to start making a list now and start throwing some parts at this thing. I don't, you know, obviously we're going to keep it on the cheap, keep it fun. He got this thing for eight hundred and fifty dollars which is solid kind of close to what i bought for originally it's great it's <laughs> great bucks so. it's great maybe we'll pad you know just knock spray over a little bit of this rust nothing seems to be too significant and the goal is to just get tyler back in his old car fire it up hear it rip it down the road a couple times see if that welded way. diff still uh still, does still holds <laughs> i like it so we found out that we have an extra set of t-tops and I don't know necessarily the reason. I'm wondering if the he got new T-tops because of this here, this crack. Believe it or not, that was also from me. Um, the T-top flew off going down the street. And as you see, not in bad condition. It landed in grass. And that was the uh, the worst no, that I got plastic. out of it. Who so, cares? you know, but I don't know you... why he had new t I was rocking it after that for years. So, if but you... yeah, that was also me abusing this car so if, if you look at this car and that's the first thing you buy you got serious problems <laughs> yeah that was a fun you're like oh yeah 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 definitely uh uh t-tops we'll just get some t-tops on this thing who <laughs> now i see that i think number one i'll get some t-tops for it fine it probably needs you know, a couple t-tops in it you'll be good <laughs> saturday that's not right wait that's not it is that a glide? I was gonna say, that's not a TH, is, that a is it? Ratchet shot? Barb? Somebody get a picture <laughs> of this pan and tell me what it is. Speed, it's a 200C. Oh, yeah, okay, it yeah, 200C then. Free speed? Yeah, it's a 200. What is it? Known for being junk. Known for being junk. junk. Checks out. <laughs> okay, cool. They only made it for two years. Yep. Got well, we got lucky enough to get one. All right. It's a rare it's honestly pretty clean under here. Yeah, not bad. Not too bad. All right. Um, cool. Maybe we try to find a Turbo 350 on Marketplace. You on it? All right, let's get rocking. All right, I'm going to go find a transmission torque arm solution. And these guys, these monkeys are going to put a fuel tank in it. See you in a minute. We can fit it like that. Send her home. Oh. Oh. Like that. Nice. All right. Ridiculous. Careful now. It's a collectible. Look at you, look at you. Just like whoa, whoa, whoa. that. Hey now. I need that. Do you want to lower it right away? Just take that <laughs> yeah, out. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> there you go. Hey, okay, look at you. Let's shove them in there. <laughs> well, that's a tank strap. Installed. One of the four main transmission to engine bolts is broken off in the engine block. We're gonna now get a welder over here, weld a nut on it, and try to pull that thing out because you you need all four. It's pretty important. Comes in handy. Yeah. This kind of power you need. You could lose one, you can't lose that one. <laughs> Right, right in Zach. Yeah, I'd say that's a... Okay, the next issue in the this is a dumbass transmission setup saga 
uh, is this. The transmission will not allow the torque converter to spin. It is somehow the one thing the guy spent money on. Excuse me, the two things he spent money on, extra T-tops and a rebuilt God, torque converter piece. for his Turbo 200 or whatever this thing's called, 200C. 200C. So we're gonna pull it out, it's not spinning. When you have it all bolted up, it should still spin freely until it's bolted to the flex plate. It does not. And we think that might be the reason that the engine and transmission would not complete the proper sandwich before any. So let's pull it down and see what's good. Yep, there it goes. It, get it, it went in, I felt <laughs> that. Yep. It was like slurp. There you go, all right. That's what we needed. All right, I just gave it a little spin. Torque converter found its home setting. Back about another half inch and it looks good. And let's hope this is the last time. Goal is to eventually get a better trans in here, but we're trying to get this thing running by the end of the week, so. Yes, and we have learned that it's the same length and the same drive shaft, the same output shaft uh, as a Turbo 350, so whatever we do, he can come back later and swap that in like that. It'll bolt right up with all the stuff we have to make, so that's great. Okay, sometimes things you think are gonna be very straightforward are just not. Like, okay, an engine and transmission is in the car. We're gonna put a drive shaft in it, you know, put on a carburetor and start this thing up and ride it down the road. And then you realize you couldn't be further from the truth. Some stuff just isn't exactly what it appears. Transmission was falling out of this car. Can we bolt it right up? No, there's a broken bolt that was keeping the trans from actually mating up with the engine, which is an issue. Now we're just trying to put the cross member back in. It was hanging out of the car before. Uh, we're realizing there's some big issues here. It looks like there's a broken thread chaser in this one. And then the nut that sits in the frame is just gone here. So, uh, I don't know, you win some, you lose some. I don't really know who had this car before uh, working on it, but it's a mess. And some things are very frustrating. And I think there's an issue that happens a lot of 80s GM cars is that people think they're standard. Most of the chassis is metric. Bolts get cross-threaded in, they get stuck in, they get broken out, uh, and it becomes a disaster. So we're dealing with that now. Uh, I'm gonna make some coffee, we're gonna settle in. It's getting late on the first night dealing with this thing. And if we can just get this transmission properly bolted in, knowing that it is a absolute garbage box, and we're still gonna have to upgrade it down the road at some point, uh, it'll be a win for us, sort of. All right, so I think I see here, if I listen, like the insert nut is there maybe? Maybe somehow with some magic we can get it to hold back on? I don't really know. That would be cool. Oh, there it is. Maybe a couple of you drills and tag welds it from the side. I found something. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. Back here, look. Look at this. This is somebody's attempt at repairing. So they hogged the hole out and then they just threw a bolt, a nut at it from the backside. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Anyway. Isn't that Here the we next go. Owner's problem? Yeah, it's gonna be Tyler again also, in ten years, dude. The, the next next time he buys it, he's gonna be <laughs> pissed. The man. Owner of this car we're talking about is actually a mechanic. I would. Which one? This guy? Well, yeah. it was a star. He was a kid. Actually, actually, actually no. Yeah, I am a mechanic. But even the person <laughs> that just we just bought it through from, sorry, is also a mechanic. And uh, two shoddy mechanics. Yeah. Whoa! I wasn't saying any of that. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Man. He comes out of his office just to tell Tyler he's a mechanic. Yeah, that's crazy. Don't worry, I'm gonna buy some more parts. I didn't say emails to send. Questionable. Yeah. Shoddy. All right, we'll figure it out. Anyway, buckle up. It's gonna be exciting. Tell me this is the wrong one. Flip it around. I did that already. Well, those line up. I think this might have been you guys. I hit it pretty hard. Yeah. That is seriously mangled. It might have been a little bit. So it stopped the car. I was rolling back, you know, with confidence to unload the car <laughs> like I like to do. Um, because it was the two of us on a Saturday. It's and cool. then it, I got stopped hard. I was coming down the trailer. I was like, all right, I got it. Bang! Hello? You all right? What happened? I don't know. Dead stop. All I hear is hello. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, he's like, what happened? I'm like, you tell me what happened. <laughs> Somebody, somebody hit this car while I was driving it? What happened? So 
Go for it. How about we go for hot? Let's go for hot. Oh. You want another one? Yeah, why not? Did anything did move at all? No. You sure? Awesome. <laughs> Made some sounds. What people like to do is put a washer over it. We could just do that. And then they weld to the washer and then you That's weld a, a nut to the washer. Yeah, we could just do I'll that. Try that all on number all seven. Way around. Just do that. There you all go, the get rid of that. Go get it. Run out of nuts, guys. <laughs> get it eventually. Seen that for real stubborn guys. Everything. You take the break? I look no, not yet. Look at that thing. <laughs> We go. I thought you wanted. That's fine. Put it on there. Just Let's put it on there. It's just about to become a thing. There. Stay. You look at it from the front. All right. Turn that sucker. What size is that one? <laughs> what is it now? <laughs> it's something. It's like a nine sixteenths maybe. Once the washer just stays there. No. <laughs> you know what they say? Eight times the charm. Hell yeah. Dude, that Tony. Washer Dude, that washer trick. <laughs> Put it back in now. Here, catch up. <laughs> Tyler Brent is with one hand. They made this out of the same stuff they made Coke cans out of. In the Definitely getting closer here. All right, so just a twist in it. Yeah. That front left has got to come up. All right, we're going to give it a little tweak. Hold that or not? Yeah. Uh -huh. All right, so after telling you 800 times that the chassis in this car is going to be metric and expected right. to be metric, we are going to drill and tap these holes that are now so hogged out that a 10 millimeter falls right through them to be standard. So here we go. Time to see what out. happens. Do as I say and Still not as metric. we stay tuned. Still metric? Huh? Still metric. Oh, we're going M12. Never mind. Never mind. We're still good. We're Bigger still metric. All right, so Barb welded a nut. To a washer that is the same size as these, or is this, mm -hmm. this is a 12? Yep. Okay, uh, for this one that's already been just blown out, it literally doesn't exist. The internal nut broke right off when somebody put the wrong bolt on it 15 times. We're gonna slide this thing in the frame rail down the rail, try to drill a couple little holes and weld to this washer and just have it in like imperceptible repair. This will be the nicest part of this whole job. Why don't you just mark two holes and we'll drill them? Look at this Tom Fuller. This is some How big is that? Uh... Give me a bowl that came out of here. It's making me a 12 minute. One might even call it down and dirty. Ooh. Barb's 30 and flirty. Is it the same thing? Dang, Barb. Dirty and flirty. I don't want the brown ones. I mean, look, they have tan, brown, navy. So after all that work, it took us Sorry, hours. Tom. <laughs> We're going to be able to put four <laughs> identical metric bolts back in this bad boy. Go up. Push up. There you go. There we go. Right. Ready to go. Ready to rock. <laughs> Ready to rock with the world's worst transmission. We'll deal with that. We'll deal with that tomorrow. All right, it's a whole new morning. We got a whole treasure trove of Summit parts in the mail today. We're actually gonna go with the Summit ready to run type distributor. It still has the HEI uh, post terminals on top, so we can use his old wires that came with the car, save a couple bucks that way. I'm gonna open this thing up. I'm gonna lighten up the advanced springs. I generally, just as a starting point, do one medium and one light spring. Uh, it helps this thing advance to uh, full advance a little bit quicker. And generally the springs that come in these things are pretty conservative. Uh, we are stoked though. We have enough stuff to get this thing fired up. We have a transmission plan in place. Zach's gonna grab that later. We've got a carburetor, we've got a distributor, and we have some headers, and we're gonna get this thing rocking. Ben, the pizza's coming. Barb's out getting the pizza. We'll be moving in no time. Cool, all right, random 
table assortment. Today we got some custom Hot Wheels that a fan made us. This is my 55. Like exactly, it's got a little pizza on the fender. It's got a Christmas tree under the hood. This is Russo's SL with an actual 2JZ in there. Thank you, Alex Lenhard. Barb's Nova, whatever, kind of boring, fine, forget it. Uh, and then Zimmy's Camaro. And I, these are like cars that he took and completely redid in the actual colors and livery and spec of our actual cars, so that's super cool. Uh, here I have some eggs from Zimmy's girlfriend's farm. And uh, yeah, we do a little bit of everything here. Those are for eating. Uh, here we go. Oh yeah, if you want to send us stuff, P.O. Box 68, Spring City, Pennsylvania. There's an there's a actual listing in every description. This distributor comes with medium springs already on it. I'm going to put one lighter spring on it just to liven it up a little bit. It's going to need all the help. Right? Yeah, it's going to need that. And there are heavier springs that you can just go ahead and throw in the garbage. If your engine has any kind of excitement factor to it, uh, you're not going to need this. So as these, this thing spins, these little counterweights are going to fly outward from centripetal force and as you see here how that rotates forward that is the actual advance pretty cool all right so before i even grab that distributor and bring it over here i'm going to pull the number one spark plug out and spin this thing around the top dead center and make sure it's on the compression stroke i'm going to reach into the cylinder with this little screwdriver, Zach is going to turn the crankshaft and we're going to feel that piston come up. I this thing has pistons in it. Oh, there it is. There it is. Come on. <laughs> okay. One more. Keep going. Got the goods, baby. Making a show. Making a show. Look at that. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Stay tuned runs on gasoline and pizza. And probably mm -hmm. coffee, I guess. Yes. That's the gasoline. That's the gasoline part, the high octane. He knows. He oh, knows, man. baby. Top, Top dead parm. cheese, baby. Chicken parm. Mmm. Mm. Okay. Cool. So what I'm looking for is here is that both of these are on the base circle of the cam, which means that this, the cam shaft is not up on either one of the valves, and it looks to be that case, which it does on the compression stroke. So I'm going to pretty much guarantee that we're right where we need to be to fire this thing up. All right, I'm going to drop this distributor down. I've taken the cap off so I can see where the rotor is pointed. I'm going to point it right at cylinder one, right over here. And then I'll probably mark it too. Let's see if we get her to sit down. No. Uh, I've got a little bit of assembly lube right on the distributor gear at the bottom there. So that it's lubed up when it hits the camshaft, it doesn't break anything. But you got sometimes you got to make sure that your camshaft construction the metal that it's made out of is compatible with the type of material on the distributor gear so do a little bit of research on that right. i could leave that where it is but i don't want to so i'm going to get in here with a screwdriver and basically turn the oil pump gear so i can swing this over and it'll sit all the way down Got my overalls on keep this thing on me Okay. And it's just a little slot. You just got to make sure the screwdriver is long enough. And this takes a little bit of trial and error. Huh? Close enough. That is pointed at one. I will mark. Well, basically, what's nice is I have it right in line with here with this little boss on there, which is nice. And I'm going to throw the cap back on it. All right. So I'm actually going to go ahead and install these Summit Shorty uh, headers that we got today before I put on the plug wires because I need to know exactly where to route them and everything. These are 130 bucks. Tyler is trying to do this you know, economically down and dirty like we do basically everything over here. 130 bucks for a set of good fitting headers with bolts, little collectors and gaskets. That's a good deal. Ask anybody. I am a big fan of these Vortec motors that came in like 
late 90s trucks, mid 90s to late 90s trucks. Uh, and they make, I think, up to like 300 horsepower stock, which is pretty sick. And if you do a little bit of work to them, you can put a, a decent cam upgrade in them. But if you do a little bit more work, I know Comp sells a little valves uh, base cutter. You can do it with a hand drill, which I've done once. I did it on HRG. It just lets you run a little bit more lift, a little bit over 500. You toss like a 505 lift cam in these things. A good intake manifold like this and some matters, and they'll make 375 horsepower. It's, it's pretty awesome. They're factory roller motors. They're killer. All right, time to put the driver's side in. Obviously, this one is a little bit more delicate because it's got a steering column shoved through here. But hopefully, they've got the dialed-in fit, and we'll be happy. All right, the both headers are in now. I'm going to check the gap on all the plugs. Some of these look enormous. Put them back in. Now I can do my ignition wires, and then we'll get the carburetor on there, and it'll be pretty close to starting up. Cool. Uh, this is standard small block Chevy firing order. 18436572, same as the small block Mopar and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, so I'm just gonna pull off these wires out of the old HEI cap. Stop money here. They're pretty grimy, but they say Street Fire MSD. So I think they're gonna be a little bit better than stock. Uh, as long as we get them finagled through these headers that they're not gonna melt anything, I feel like they're gonna work just fine. And it's gonna save us a couple bucks just to reuse them. So that's fun. And I might throw this up there and try to get the wheel. All right, Tyler just showed up. Um, just to catch you up, I've got a set of Summit headers on there that look pretty great and fit awesome. Uh, and I have a Summit ready to run distributor that has been timed. This thing's a top dead center. I realized that all of your spark plugs were gapped to like 60,000. <laughs> so I knocked them all down to about 32. Uh, this should be timed. We just gotta hook this up. I wanna get, I know you brought a battery, throw that battery in. We're close. I've got a carburetor ready to rock. I'd like to get it fired off, man. Hop in and turn the key, you know what I mean? Just to hear it. Obviously, then we got to figure out cooling and yeah. uh, the rest of it. I'm going to grab the carburetor. This might just have to sit in there for now. All right, so this is a square bore style intake. So we're going to run this adapter plate on it. Uh, I'm gonna go just like this. This is actually off of my Demon. That's my first car. Oh, so giving some first, first car, car love. Heck yeah. A little, lend a little piece to it. Yeah, but did you sell your first car? No, I never sold my first <laughs> car. I did not. I was lucky enough not to sell my first car. When I bought my first car, my 340 Demon, when I was 15, 14, 15. Uh, I had talked to so many guys in their 40s that just were like, man, I had this Cuda, I had this Roadrunner, I had this Chevelle, and I sold it, and I wish I had it. Man, yeah. I wish I had it. So, no, so yeah, many dudes totally were like, never, they looked at me like, never going to find it again. Man, so, a lot, man. I, uh, I listened, and I still have it, which is awesome. And I was a pretty broke pro drift racer for a long time. <laughs> and and that was the one thing I held, held on, on tight. Held on tight to that thing. <laughs> All right, I have just laid on the Holly Street HP all aluminum 650 CFM double pumper carburetor. And we're gonna run on this bad boy. If it looks familiar, we stole it off of our RX-7. Small block project. And we'll just uh, beg Holly for another one. And hope for the best. Yeah, that's where that goes. Oh. And let me connect the battery back up, get some power to that coil, and it's ready to run distributor, and we'll fire this thing right up. Right off. I don't feel I can feel it. Did you get the vacuum cap on the front of that thing? <laughs> sir, yes, sir. You do it. All it's right. your first car, dog. All right, here it comes. Sit in that thing. Sit in it. Get in it. We'll work the gas. All right, turn the key to the on position. You ready? Wait, no. Let's have a... <laughs> You feel it? You're in your first car. You uh, feeling it? It's nostalgic. It's nostalgic. I feel at home. Yeah. I feel like I'm 16 again, just got my license. Yeah, dude. Ready to rock. You're just all hormones and Bob Marley tapes. Ready to go. Matches. Hopes and dreams. All, all, all of them like are pivoting and hinged on this Trans Am being awesome. Going to school, going out with your friends. Picking up, up some ladies. ladies. Heck yeah. All right, turn the key. Let's see Ready what she keys. does. All right, Bro hit it. Seized. 
The starter is smoking. That ain't good. We don't want that. Did the motor turn it all? Yeah. It do did? it again. Maybe we don't. Hit it. Yeah, one more. Give me one more. Yes. Okay. Starter turns. What's it's the, the smoke from? Oh, the starter, for sure. In the starter? Well, yeah. I don't think they're supposed to smoke much at all. Yeah, I think that's very little smoke is normal for a starter. Let's put it up see what we're looking at here. <laughs> Not a great start. Literally. To the Tyler Revival. It will not start. Yeah, not a great starter. Yeah, here we go. We got it all. I dug in the back in the treasure trove. Mr. Gasket. Ooh. Spin that stock board that for Wait. sure. There you go. Thank you. Straight, stagger block, da da da. Yeah, it'll be alright. So, my guess is, yeah. I'll be there. So grab some bolts and we'll try it. All right. Round three. Round three. You ready? I'm ready. It's not smoking. That's good. Oh, it is smoking. I Stop. smelled smoke. Or I felt. Stop. Smoke. Is this getting hot? Yeah, this is your problem right here. You don't have enough wire. This is not. There's. I don't think this is how that should be connected. Yeah. Oh that's yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, we didn't. It's not a voltage we didn't. going from this to that. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is disconnect this and do better. We're gonna do better. <laughs> we're gonna do better for everybody. There it goes. <laughs> we have power, baby. Oh, ready? Good. <laughs> That's exciting. <laughs> While we were working on that first fire up, Zach got back with the new transmission torque arm and drive shaft. All right, so we hit a big roadblock last night realizing that we had no torque arm for this thing, no drive shaft, and it housed, it's currently holding a 200C complete garbage three-speed transmission in it that we know is gonna explode very quickly. So we needed to get a bunch of stuff and extremely fast. And I just started scouring Facebook Marketplace and came up with this package of parts from a guy named Ed Clayton, who is a Stay Tuned fan. Awesome dude out of Jersey near E-Town. We super appreciate it. And he put this whole package of stuff together that he had listed. And at the end, I said, he said, hey, if anything else you need, let me know. And I was like, do you have a transmission? And he said, yes, I do. And it's perfect <laughs> for you. So this is the deal. This car would have come with a 700 R4, which is a four-speed overdrive automatic. Um, but, you know, just to rip it around town, he really just wants a three-speed. This is a turbo 350 with a nine-inch tail housing. It's the same length, basically exactly as what a 700 R4. So we're going to be able to use the 700 R4 drive shaft that came out of a different car. He had a whole, this guy's obviously had a bunch of third gens. He has this aftermarket mount that will allow us to bolt this thing in because the mount position on this is a little bit different. But basically, we have a whole setup torque arm with a polyurethane mount. Uh, this transmission has an aftermarket mount to accept the torque arm. You can't just bolt it on just any turbo 350. Yeah, right, yep. So we have that set up. Uh, it will accept that torque arm right in that little aftermarket mount. Turbo 350s are killer. They hold a lot of power. You can build them up like crazy. This is what Zimmy runs in his 10 second car. Uh, it's awesome. So we got everything here for five hundred bucks. Yeah, it, was it's awesome. good, it was a pretty good it deal. It's a good deal. We appreciate you. And it Ed. happened quick. And we got it moved. Yeah, we got it in a matter of hours. So it's got a converter, full trans. He said it shifts great. It came out of a car, a third gen with that whole setup on it. So we are in business here. Sweet. Anyway, we are rocking and rolling here. We can get this thing up, pull that 200C out. That was really just a, it was going to explode very quickly and not in a blaze of glory. It was just going to probably be limp and boring. So <laughs> this will go in there and work awesome. I'm very excited. When we had this carburetor on that Vortec 350, it just doesn't seem to be running right. I would, you know, hit the, hit the throttle a couple times before we fired it up, it would rev right up, and then the second I touched the throttle, it would just shut off and die or start a little bit of a bonfire here. I don't think it's flowing fuel from the proper regular vacuum signal. I'm a little bit concerned it could be from that adapter plate because it's a spread bore uh, manifold, which is shaped kind of like this. 
and the, you know, the 4150 is shaped square, but we put the adapter plate with two new gaskets on it. I think it's sealed up. I think maybe this carburetor, even though it's pretty new, has been sitting long enough to get gunked up. Uh, the RX-7, the last time I tried to fire it up, I think it did the same exact thing. That's why I'm thinking I'm gonna dig in here, tear this apart, just go through all the different circuits, make sure everything is flowing and happy. And uh, while I'm doing that, Barb is back, and Tyler and Barb are gonna slap in that new to us turbo 350 transmission with the mount and the torque arm, get that all dialed in. And hopefully the drive shaft tonight, just button up the drivetrain would be wicked awesome. And by that point, I will have this thing back together, toss it on, get a couple revs out of it tonight, put it in gear even would be sick. All right, it's already like nine o'clock, so we'll see how far we get. I'm gonna put on some music and tear this apart. Hell yeah, all right. Good morning, America. It's 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> And we are dropping this freshly gone through carburetor back into the Firebird. The TH350 is sitting up in there. Nice. Had to use an aftermarket mount because this car never came with a turbo 350, but it worked out with a little bit of grinding. Uh, I think this thing will work now. I hope. I didn't find any crazy smoking gun like clogged passages or anything, but I did go through literally everything and hopefully it works now. Do it. Again. Damn. The float's right here. Oh, I'm making sure that there's no open. What? Making sure there's no open holes in the intake in the back. There's a giant open hole here, dude. Oh, yeah. That'd do something. And in the front, though. No, these Those is coolant, the coolant, oh, coolant. coolant. No, nah, there's a huge one. Oh. Yeah, that's probably what happened. That'd do something. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Ready? Hang on, hang on. It's gonna carburate now. I've been all through this thing. Should have some vacuum now. Okay. Ready? Ready? Our first car. That's what we've been waiting for. There we go. <laughs> Dude. That thing sounds crisp. Firebird was breathing fire tonight. <laughs> Did you hear that thing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was amazing. I was like, brum, brum, brum. I'm like, brum. Yeah, it's all there. It's all there. Dude, I saw you jump back. <laughs> oh, wow. OK, this is our last day to get Tyler's Trans Am up and on the road. As always, we are under the gun here at Stay Tuned. It's Thursday, you're gonna see this video tomorrow. So we are rocking and rolling and it takes some time to edit the thing, so we gotta go. We picked up this giant exhaust erector set from Summit, they call this a builder kit. It's 409 stainless, two and a half inch. And if you don't know, third gens do this weird thing where the headers come down, they Y together, they go to one big cat, then they come back out in one pipe, go up to this vertical muffler, and then two pipes, tailpipes come out of it. We're not exactly going to do that, but we're going to, we went to pipes and got this sweet two in, two out muffler. That's going to be the centerpiece of this exhaust. We're going to use these two things together, but the idea is headers are going to come down, run into this thing. We're going to have this offset on the side where the cat would normally sit and then just do two side pipes right next to each other out the, out the passenger side of this thing. It's going to be awesome. I'm excited. I, I didn't know that pipe until right now, but I can't. Right? <laughs> it's going to be sick.
So while Zimmy and I were whipping up this exhaust, Barb was putting the last piece of this drivetrain puzzle together. This drive shaft we got from uh, Facebook Marketplace. It was perfect except it didn't come with a yoke. And this is the smaller style that GM uses in a ton of things. It's that 200C, the, the Turbo 350, 700R4, 4L60, T5, a lot. So I had a couple laying around. We managed to pull one apart, load it into this drive shaft, and Barb is installing it. And then we're basically gonna be done under here. Just put the shifter on, uh, this vacuum modulator, vacuum, send it up, and then we're rocking and rolling. Cool. All right, so we are going to yank off this serpentine style belt, replace it with a fancy set of chrome summit pulleys, and oh. get very close to driving this thing down the road. It's still moving. Ah, oh, never mind. We're good. Okay. Thank you. Okay, after a long night of thrashing, Barb got the accessory drive all dialed in. That cold case radiator is hooked up. Uh, Zimmy and I buttoned up the exhaust. We're going to do a few more things and then take Tyler's car out for its maiden voyage after a bazillion years. All right, we have been thrashing early morning. It's Friday. You're going to see this video in nine minutes, uh, which is great. So we want to take out for a quick cruise. See if we can peer pressure him into some burnouts and have fun. See what she can do. Hit it. Yep. All right, we're back in the shop. We're gonna get Tyler maybe to do a little bit of a burnout, send this thing off, finish the episode up. How you feeling? It feels good. All right, man. It's been 10 years since I've seen this thing. And if somebody were to tell me when we found it that after 10 years of it being gone, that we're gonna get it up and running in less than a week, I'd be like, you're full of But that's exactly what Tony told me. And that's exactly what happened. Yep. So it goes without saying that these guys, they get it done and they get it done down and dirty. <laughs> And uh, who wants some smokies? Yeah, I do. I do. I do. I do. Me. Me. What do you say? Sounds like a plan, Stan. Old Tyler would be stoked. I could feel it. That is it for this episode. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. This has been an absolute blast getting Tyler's Trans Am back in action. Uh, this has been awesome. All right, see you guys next time.